the men of the Niagara movement coming from the toil of the year's hard work and pausing a moment from the earning of their daily bread turn toward the nation and again ask in the name of 10 million the privilege of a hearing. In the past year, the work of the Negro hater has flourished in the land. Step by step, the defenders of the rights of American citizens have retreated. The work of stealing the black man's ballot has progressed and the 50 and more representatives of stolen votes still sit in the nation's capital. Discrimination and travel and the public accommodation has so spread that some of our weaker brethren are actually afraid to thunder against color discrimination as such and are simply whispering for ordinary decencies. Against this, the Niagara movement eternally protest. We will not be satisfied to take one jot or tittle less than our full manhood rights. We claim for ourselves every single right that belongs to a freeborn American, political, civil, and social. And until we get these rights, we will never cease to protest and assail the ears of America. The battle we wage is not for ourselves alone, but for all true Americans. It is a fight for ideals. Less this, our common fatherland, false to its founding, become in truth the land of the thief and the home of the slave, a byword and a hissing among the nations for its sounding pretensions and pitiful accomplishment. Never before in the modern age has a great and civilized folk threatened to adopt so cowardly a creed in the treatment of its fellow citizens, born and bred on its own soil, stripped of his verbiage and subterfuge, and in its naked nastiness, the new American creed says, fear to let black men even try to rise, lest they become the equals of white. And this is the land that professes to follow Jesus Christ? The blasphemy of such a course is only matched by its cowardice. In detail, our demands are clear and unequivocal. First, we would vote. With the right to vote goes everything. Freedom, manhood, the honor of your wives, the chastity of your daughters, the right to work, and the chance to rise and let no man listen to those who deny this. We want full manhood suffrage, and we want it now, henceforth, and forever. Second, we want discrimination in public accommodation to cease. Separation in railway and streetcars, based simply on race and color, is un-American, undemocratic, and silly. We protest against all such discrimination. Third, we claim the right of free men to walk, talk, and be with them that wish to be with us. No man has the right to choose another man's friends, and to attempt to do so is an impudent interference with the most fundamental human privilege. These are some of the chief things that we want. How shall we get them? By voting where we may vote, by persistent, unceasing agitation, by hammering at the truth, by sacrifice and work. We do not believe in violence, neither in the despised violence of the raid, nor the lauded violence of the soldier, nor the barbarous violence of the mob. But we do believe in John Brown, and in that incarnate spirit of justice, that hatred of a lie, that willingness to sacrifice money, reputation, and life itself on the altar of right. And here on the scene of John Brown's martyrdom, we reconsecrate ourselves, our honor, our property, to the final emancipation of the race which John Brown died to make free. Our enemies, triumphant for the present, are fighting the stars in their courses. Justice and humanity must prevail. We live to tell these dark brothers of ours, scattered in council, wavering and weak, that no bribe of money or notoriety, no promise of wealth or fame is worth the surrender of a people's manhood or the loss of a man's self-respect. We refuse to surrender the leadership of this race to cowards and trucklers. We are men who will be treated as men on this rock we have planted our banners. We will never give up through the trump of doom finds us still fight and we shall win. The past promised it, the present foretells it. Thank God for John Brown. Thank God for Garrison and Douglas, Sumner and Phillips, Nat Turner and Robert Gouldshaw, and all of the hallowed dead who died for freedom. Thank God for all of those today, few may their voices be, who have not forgotten the divine brotherhood of all men, white and black, rich and poor, fortunate and unfortunate. Courage, brothers! The battle for humanity is not lost or losing. All across the sky sit signs of promise. The Slav is rising in his might. The yellow millions are tasting liberty. The black Africans are writhing towards the light. And everywhere, the laborer with ballot in his hand is voting open the gates of opportunity and peace. The morning breaks over bloodstained hills. We must not falter. We may not shrink. Above all are the everlasting stars.